Um, so, um, yeah, I did study as an artist and I've had a enjoyment in design the process and building or whatever. But we moved here five years ago, so that's our little house in the, the Slab Road. And uh, it was very overgrown in the garden. One of the nice things is you come in the front door and go up the steps or when you get to the back bedroom and that brings you out from upstairs into the back garden. And I remember my son's room at the time. I remember one of his friends opened the door one night and he had the buddlier uh, and the brambles right there. He really thought he'd stepped into the new road in Narnia. Um, so it was really quite a, an overgrown. Without permission, that's Lucy. Um, so you get this sense of this is this door to the bedroom with a very dark brown and all very overgrown. I mean, lovely in a way, but uh, we couldn't really use it. So we started clearing. You get a sense this, this is the back of the house, so that, that's the upstairs bedroom, and then the rest of the house goes down below. But this is my first attempt to just sort of clear things out. Your land is, you might, you've got to make a place for plants. We really need some plants in the back garden. Um, so I sort of started off here thinking I'll put a few blocks in like this. And then really decided you still can't see where the wall is there. And you still can't see where the, the old wall is at the back of the garden. So really started clearing things away, but the lovely old stone wall there. And then I guess the first problem with this spindly old apple tree, it had brambles growing out of the top of it. And it was said, do we keep the apple tree? Because the next door used to be a pub and there used to be apple trees everywhere for making cider. And it's a romantic idea to maybe keep the tree. Uh, but then decided it was right in the middle of dictating everything else. So it, it had to go, which is sometimes a difficult decision to make. Um, and lots of digging and, uh, and burning old, uh, old wood. Um, and then I, I decided I was, I've never driven one before, I've got to get a mini digger in. And we've got, as you saw from that picture, we've got steps at the front of the house. But luckily at the back of the house, along this row of houses, they've got a little alleyway and a separate, uh, one of those little roads, a guard slab road on the back. So it was just enough for me to squeeze a mini digger in after knocking out this wall. Um, so I got to play around with landscaping. Um, so there wasn't really an option to take away loads of soil or to bring in loads of soil. So it was just a question of moving it from here to there and, and making a shape that uh, was going to allow me to, to build a wall along here. Uh, so it's kind of, sort of making it up as you go along, you know, putting stakes in and building it. I had sort of an idea of the sort of flow that I wanted. Um, that, that was going to be a flat bit, and then there was going to be a wall, and then there was going to be soil up there, roughly. Um, so that, that was great, it didn't, didn't manage to fall over. But I had no idea what involving it, what sort of 15 metres of retaining wall really involved when I started. Uh, so I did get a friend, two young lads, to help me. That's the only bit of help I did get, is they helped me dig this trench. And I decided I wanted a little curve on this bit. But uh, other than that, I've sort of done it all myself, so it's a rebar in your footings is a good tip. And we've got a concrete lorry with a big tube parked up on the road and they had like six cubes of cement and they were sort of gushed all over the place. Um, and it, I over-ordered slightly and it was a bit like the magic porridge pot. You know, there was all this extra concrete coming out which I had to sort of rake into another, another area um, which became useful later on. And it's sort of spilling out all over here. Um, so this is just a regular building work. And then you start to get the sense that you can step out of this upstairs bedroom into a sort of slightly more defined area. Uh, laser levels are great, um, especially at night. Uh, 
Uh, so I invested in one of those, and it means you could sort of get the end of the wall that end, join up the other end there. And, Sorry, uh, what does it do, the laser level? What does it do? Yeah. Well, it's got a balance inside it, so um, it's like a spirit level, so it'll, it'll create a line that is all of the same height, and you can sort of move it up and down to what height you want, and that'll all be the same level. So it used to be very hard in the olden days to make that bit that same height as, as that bit. You could use a water, one of the trick was a water tube, and if you had a sort of clear bit either end, it's all the Egyptians did, I think, um, the water level would be the same height either the level, but nowadays we use lasers. Uh, so slowly, slowly, it started to, this is from the, from the bedroom, you get the sense of the stepping up uh, into the outside. Um, and also, don't look kind of wall like that's such a hard, hard job. But um, also, from getting these big, heavy concrete blocks, I, if I'd known about it, I probably wouldn't have done it. But they all had to be dropped off on the road below and then carried out the steps and then round the path around the side of the house <laughs> and clogged and then put on the into the wall. It's quite, quite a labour of love. And then the old concrete wall is gone, I put a fence in and learned a bit about rendering. <laughs> you put a bit of, sort of mesh under there, and some special mix, scratch coat, and a uh, render coat. Uh, by this time you landed already started, well we started really, when we, we need someone to put plants. So we landed and started popping bits of popping plants in there. And we went for gravel in the end, and this area I decided to put some decking down. We did lots of cross pieces. Uh, and I just wanted to use scaffolding planks rather than decking because I thought it was interesting so I kept all the little metal ends to them. And this area I cantilevered it out with some beams just to make another little space around the side. And I'll change that door so it's a glass door now. And you can sort of be in that room and look out into the garden. And this is, I suppose, nearly finished, starting to look good. And then there's this other look around the side of the house. And there was this rather overgrown area that I've also done some work on. It was very cramped. So I built a little platform, a wooden platform here, and put a waterproof roof on it. And that's become another little sitting area that also connects this upper terrace. And then, uh, it's all about planting, here we go. There's a list, Lana very kindly went through last night thinking what, what was what. Was uh, and she has prepared a list of plants. Uh, and it's become yeah, a new, enjoyable space. This last bit, I haven't quite finished up here, but that'll create a sitting area at the top because you've got a lovely view over the valley, the different hills. Yeah, sort of up there. Um, then we'll have some bit, really. It's beautiful. Garden, all the flowers are amazing. From what it was. <coughs> You've got a number of different seating areas, don't you? So, I mean, that, that's so lovely to pick and choose. Yeah, I think, it, it, I think the thing that drives me is it would be nice to sit here and you can look there, and then it's often if you have people here, if there was a party, you could have some people over there, and you could walk from here to there. So, so it is very human centric and sort of flow. <coughs> or if you had to go to the kitchen, how would you get there? And would Where is the kitchen in relation? The kitchen is that room down there, so it's downstairs. So there was a shot earlier, you come up the steps, you can get quite easily to that slightly lower area. Or there's some French windows down here, you can come up to this seating area here, which on those occasional summer's days when it's sunny, <laughs> um, and it's the weekend, 
you know, you can, you can spend the time around it. It's sort of nice getting close. I was always very glad in having done the, the curved wall. It gives it a nice sense of uh, sort of being enclosed a bit in the, in the hillside. I had so many photographs and it was really nice to actually go through them. And I, I did it to enjoy. <coughs> That's all the sort of rubbishy bit, it's not quite done yet, but I hear bags of rubbish and so forth. Yeah, uh, I think that probably gives you... I just want to um, say to everybody that um, Yolanda very kindly gave us a list of the plants that okay. she, she put in the garden. <coughs> and um, as, as a guest to the garden, I can say that that summer, it already looked mature and amazing. I think that was the most stunning thing. Yeah. I couldn't believe it when I turned. I was like, whoa, this, how, this has just been done. So this is the list of the plants that worked really, really well. And I've printed out a few copies at the end there. And again, I will add that to the description when um, I'll do the replay and put all the photos so that you can have a, have a look at sort of where they were placed and stuff, just, just for your own reference. But please, guys, ask Chris some questions, because I'm sure you must have some questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got one about your scaffolding. Did you treat them at all? Uh, I gave them, um, yes. Um, just a sort of clear... Is it a natural varnish or something? Well, it was a wood treatment. I can't remember what yeah. it was. Not, okay. not the stain, so the clear stain. They nothing, don't they? Yeah. But they're quite robust, aren't yeah, they? Because they're scattered, they're outside. Yeah. Right, okay. And they last quite a while. Yeah, they last quite a while. Yeah, they last quite a while. Well, I mean, like, the, 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 you get quite a lot down the, the gap. Mm. In hindsight, I probably would have done them before I laid them down, so the underside. Right. Okay. And the sides got a lot, yeah. but uh, it's just a clear wood and treatment. They, and are they quite? Um, they're not slippery. Do you have to kind of maintain them? I didn't sand them or anything, so they've got a slight natural yeah. roughness. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I was out there last week, and everything was icy. Oh. So mm -hmm. I, I think decking would be just as slippery. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, probably, and you probably chuck yeah. a bit of sand. Yeah. In, yeah. in, your, in your mix yes. or, or something, but yeah, lots of lots of layers of that would be good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Right. Which way does your garden face? Um, we that looks out down on the valley, so the sun comes up over there and travels around here. So we get the evening sun sat West, there, westish then, and in the in the mornings, yes, we're uh, pretty much south. Facing. Right. Yeah. I've got a fun thing to ask you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, when when um, I mean it looks amazing, and I, I've got a um, I've got a, a bed at the back of our um, our house from our garden. I'm just wondering, did you have you considered like the winter time, or is it just purely a kind of <coughs> Because I mean, obviously, you know, in winter, things are just going to... The evergreens in there as well. I mean, the first year, was just I just put in lots of annuals just to have immediate impact. Yeah. But there's evergreens as well, but they're still, initially, they're still quite small. They take longer to grow, but yes, now the evergreen swaps in there, and evergreen clematis, I think, with that as well. So you've still so, got yeah. that kind yeah. of in the winter? Yeah, if you want to have some structure in the garden. Okay, I'll be taking one of your lists. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask something you might not want to answer. Maybe. <laughs> Are you, well, you've done, obviously done a lot of work, so... Um, but what was your budget for doing all of this for the start of the uh, It's just something we could afford every month, really. <laughs> it was a decision, oh, we're going to have to buy another pallet of this or another ten bags of cement. Um, I, I don't know how many hours of labour it was, it was quite a lot. <laughs> Um, I don't know, what do you reckon? A few, a few thousand? Who knows? Whiskey in the mix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whiskey after six. <laughs> um, what has it been three thousand? Three thousand? In, in materials? Yeah, are you fine? I'm not asking you to pull. Great, I don't know. I, I mean, know. it was just. Uh, so it reached a point where I just want, sort of wanted to to keep going, and it was quite a, you know it was quite a, you had to be quite determined. Yeah. 
mm. at the time is just to get it going. And once it's once you're going, it's, it's all right. And, and you, at the end of the day, you think, oh, that, that's satisfying. But uh, I, I don't know. I think if I was, if I was quoting for that commercially. <laughs> yeah, if I worked it out. Yeah, yeah. But it's it, because it's a sort of, just a sort of creative yeah. endeavour. Yeah. Um, I didn't keep too much of an eye on that. And when it came to the chills, he just had to buy them and yeah. make do and move on. Yeah. It, it may not have worked because it wasn't the right time for it. Yeah. I'm curious about whether you had considered making that room that you mentioned with your son's bedroom, a living space? Yes, it would make a nice living space, even an upstairs kitchen. Um, no, you so, should, I just wondered whether it's something that you can do. Yeah. You, you, get, you get a nice view of the, uh, uh, of the garden now through this glass door and uh, across to that seating area up the stairs. But the, the sun's that way. So, in, in, we've got sort of a couple of living spaces downstairs, but they look out onto the valley and get the sun coming through the window. So that's probably the slight drawback in making that a living space. It works well as a bedroom, really. Yeah. 